I have just finished setting up this 85X from FlashForge. Pretty easy. The screen here actually comes attached here and it's facing inwards. You remove the two screws, then you remove two more screws and then you can slide it on. It just pops right on there. Uh, you could easily take it off and remount it if you wanted to package it back up or something. Then you attach this piece here, uh, again, two screws. Then this just goes on and like rotates and kind of clockworks into there. You put these on, they just press down. They are numbered because they go in a particular order because they reverse in different directions. You then bring the tubes over from this, put them in. It actually does have one screw that goes in there to keep it nice and secure. You clip this one on. Then you take the cable from here, run it to the back, put a cable clamp to seal it in place. And that's it. I have to plug the power in now, get it on the Wi-Fi, and then we'll try to print some test stuff. I don't like the on-screen touch stuff. Like it's just not a good touch screen. That said, I imagine the printer's pretty good. But trying to type in my Wi-Fi password, the keys, the text keys were like really small. So I kept hitting keys that I didn't want to. And then I would try to go to backspace instead of backspace and I would type L three times. So it took way too long to get my Wi-Fi passwords in there. But I imagine you're not gonna use the screen a whole lot. Um, there are printers with better ones. There are printers with far worse ones. I had, I forget, it wasn't Cheaty, but it was someone else had a screen that was just atrocious and it literally came with a stylus and it was like half the size of this screen. But they might want to include a stylus or something in here to touch for people with big sausage fingers like me. Now I'm gonna get their FlashMaker app thing and scan the QR code and do all that. Another thing I'm not too happy about is this FlashMaker FlashForge app. It isn't in the App Store. It's not in the Android App Store. It's not in the iOS App Store. They want you to download the APK from their website. I don't like that. Go through the process, get the developer account, get it submitted to the store. I went ahead and got, got a FlashForge Orca installed the computer. I installed their app. I scanned the QR code and it didn't even ask me to do anything on the uh, phone. I just opened the camera and scanned it and it automatically detected it and did all this. So that was kind of nice. So at this point that he realizes he forgot to take a screw out. There is a screw in the back. All right, so it just loaded the filament on its own and had me pick the colors. I picked the colors, press next, and it's just gonna start printing, I think. It's gonna do their test model. So I guess we're doing that. While it's doing that, we can take a look at the app here. It shows that it's gonna take about 14 minutes to do this. It does give me the option to cancel. It shows me what I set for the filaments. I picked yellow for this bottom one and red for the top. Um, yeah, pretty pretty basic app there. Nope, we don't wanna pause the printing. I pressed the wrong thing. It's also showing me the temperatures. Um, I don't think there's a light, but it has a light bulb button. So maybe that's for their other printers. Show you the back real quick. So this is where it's gonna purge. So not an optimal place because you have the power cord right below that. So what am I supposed to put here? Maybe they have something in their thing that I'll like screw in here or something because that poop's just gonna dump right there and be all around the cable. It's at a really good price point. You do have the feed system and you don't have to pay extra for it like with Bamboo's AMS. So that's really nice. Now it doesn't have the nice features. Like it isn't able to read the, you know, RFID tag or whatever, know the filament, but you just bleep bloop it in there and that's okay. Not a big deal. Yeah, it's on the side. So it's kind of out of the way. It's not on the top. You don't have to worry about the cables rubbing on glass or something. Like it's a really nice design. They do sell an enclosure for it. Be interesting to see how it works with AMS if it encloses the whole thing or if like that goes on the outside of it. I don't know. And yeah, this is what we've purged so far. That was probably the test material because there was a little blue piece on the machine when I unboxed it. And then there's what it's done just to purge so far. But it yeeted these like six inches behind the machine. They probably would have been on the floor, but I had some 3D printed stuff back there that kind of stopped it. So definitely need to think about a poop shoot. I'll have to look into that. While it's printing, there is no spot for an SD card, but there is a place for USB right here on the display head. Um, you're gonna be kind of limited on what kind of USB drive you can use there. If it's too long, it's gonna interfere with the number one spool. I also just noticed that, let me take a handheld. It does have the wiper there for the nozzle, which is kind of nice. A lot of these printers don't have that. So whatever the test file is that it's just doing on its own, 
it's using filament from both. So that'll be interesting. Um, not necessarily colors that go together, but I noticed when I came back out here that there was poop from the other one. I think it's just printing their logo and then a purge tower. Okay, yeah, it's just their logo. This thing is pretty clacky sometimes. I wonder what's making that clack. There's something here in the back that when it comes home, it's a bit of a, a clanking. It's not annoying or anything. Just I want to make sure everything's tightened down. So maybe I will bring the head forward and just look back there and make sure there's no screws that are backed out or anything. But I imagine it's the part of the like purge. One thing I do like is these corners are much higher than on the way higher than on the Bamboo A1 and even on the X1C. So it was perfectly easy to get that plate in there on the first try. Sometimes on my like A1, I would have to like try a couple of times. The X1C, sometimes you just get a little off to the left or something. This would just snap right in. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, there it goes, it says printing is completed. Not bad, just a little thin maker chip from them. But uh, I guess it's upside down, there we go. One little kind of weird defect there, but I'm not too worried about it. I really like the way that this Aurora Red looks. Just kind of hides any print lines, except for this little thing here, this little anomaly. But yeah, let's get a benchy going. It does have a few files here. It has a fish, uh, an orca plug, which is a calibration cube, I think. Their little uh, maker token there and then a 3D benchy. We'll do the benchy and there we're off to the races as you can see. So here's a slight problem. I should have removed the one filament. It's wasting time on a purge tower even though I'm using the same color for all four of their selections that they were going to try to do for the benchy. So it's making it take quite a long time. But so far it's looking amazing. Um, that's good to know though. If you're going to print one of the files as multicolor that it comes with. Only have one filament attached. You should avoid that purge tower. Our benchy is done here. And came out pretty good. A little bit of string in there, but otherwise, I'd say it came out quite nice. Yeah, it did take 43 minutes, but again, some of that was because of that prime tower or purge tower, whatever you want to call it. But I'm pretty happy with that. I didn't plan this, but power just went out for like one second, enough to trip this. I am trying the resume. Uh, the temperature's pretty much there, and we're almost done anyway. So and if anything does happen, it's not going to be too major. But yeah, pretty opportune thing. Now I got to go like fix the clocks and everything. Kind of annoying, but yeah. It did recover from power fine. Again, it was only out for a second or two, but let's go ahead and get this off of here. We always have to clean this up just a little. Now this time I actually ironed the tops. Normally when I print this, I don't, but I was curious to see, uh, you know, how much of a difference it would make. I always hate this part. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty, Pretty happy with it. I still got to clean it up a little. You can see some fuzz there on the knuckles and stuff. But overall, this handled this wonderfully. I even like uh, the way that this filament feels of theirs. I am quite satisfied with the way that turned out. Nothing looks weird on it. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, comparable to everything I've done on competing printers. Between this and the Benchy, I am very happy with this. So it's been a minute and it still hasn't told me how long this is gonna take. I also just noticed on the app print, it actually did the test strip thing here instead of in the back like it did with their maker tag. So maybe you can set in the model where you want it. So on this one too, it's laying it down on the front. It still will not tell me how much time this model is going to take. And this is a model that they put on here, so you think it would be like pre-calculated or something? I'm not exactly sure how well this is going to turn out, because I changed a ton of settings, but we're going to try to print this pumpkin. It should take seven hours if everything goes well. This is coming along pretty nicely. We've got a little under two hours left. I'm doing lightning infill, which I've never done before, and it looks kind of interesting. It's I think it's what's causing all that stringing in there because this filament's very dry. 
and it's voxel PLA filament that I'm using, so it shouldn't be stringing, and it's not stringing anywhere else. I've just never used the lightning infill before. This print is done. It's been done about 10 minutes, so it should just pop right off, yep. Oh, I can already tell the changes I made are gonna make this really weak, but that's okay. We were just doing this for demonstrations purposes. Get these tree bits off of here. And I made some changes to the trees, so they should come off easier. Oh yeah, Let's see here. My initial impressions on this 85X from Flash Forge are that it's a pretty good budget printer, especially if you want to do multicolor. For the price point and the fact that it comes with multicolor, it is really hard to argue with. Now, it's not the biggest build volume. It's open, the enclosure, you have to print most of the parts yourself. So it does have its drawbacks, but for a budget printer and you wanna be able to do multicolor, I think this thing's gonna be great. They do already have a bunch of nozzles available for it. They have a bunch of plates available for it. So you can go on the website and check that out. I'm gonna revisit this in the future. I have some TPU coming. It's just taking longer than I wanted it to. And I have some other projects I have to get to first. So just wanted to get this video out on my initial thoughts on this thing. My biggest complaint is probably the touch screen. I just, it's, my fingers don't like it. You don't have to do much on it. Just like uh, set the filaments and stuff. So it's not that big of a deal. I imagine Biku will come out with an aftermarket one. If this printer gets any popularity whatsoever, they're pretty good about doing that. So it works pretty great. I did give it a little bit of lubrication. It could probably use a little more. Ah, some comes off of my finger. I'll probably run this some more when the TPU comes. I'll print a bunch with that. And then I'll get in here with my uh, gear floss and clean that out and re-lubricate it better. And, you know, I, I think this will ultimately end up in the garage. I may go ahead and get that enclosure kit and then I can do some other filaments in here. Some ones you don't necessarily want to breathe. Not that you really want to breathe the fumes from any 3D printer. Or that you want to breathe the fumes from any 3D printer filament, but especially the ones that I'm thinking of using this for, and you just don't want to breathe them. So this will probably become a garage printer, but before it gets moved out there and gets all sandy and dusty, I need to figure out the enclosure for it. So I might pick up their kit. That said, would I buy this printer? Um, I would probably go with something more high end. It's gonna cost a whole lot more though. But if you were trying to get into 3D printing or you just wanted to dabble with multi-filament printing, this thing is great. It has a really good price point. I like how it keeps all the rolls over here instead of being on top. Sorry, I got a splinter from that tree. There's a, a piece of the plastic stuck in my finger. Yeah, that uh, that kind of hurt. Um, where was I? I wish the build volume was a little bit bigger, but that's okay. I believe it has filters or has room for filters or something here. It doesn't actually have them, but that's kind of a nice touch. If I could get the door back on, good job, Ryan. We'll, we'll put that back on in a minute. But yeah, like it's nice and solid here on the island in the kitchen, it's not moving. If you had it on a decent desk, I imagine it wouldn't move at all. There is one kind of annoying thing. Um, the poop chute door is metal, so it makes a clanking sound. If you had a bunch of these going in a print farm, that could get annoying if you're in the room, but you'd probably be out of the room anyway. And then I need to address the poop chute. I have seen some uh, containers for it. Really, I think all you need to do is make room for the power plug in the back uh, at the bottom of it. So just raise it up a little. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, these, these prints just came out fantastic. And then when I was, when I was yes, you know, the power went out for that second. So I did on resume have a little bit of an issue and I can probably, yeah, that just breaks right off. But that's not so much the fault of the printer. That's that it took me a few minutes to get back to the resume. And yeah, like the ones on there are pretty good. It was just that one for whatever reason. That one line did not want to work very well. But yeah, I think I've rambled enough about this. I've been pretty happy with their filament too. I used it for the Benchy and for this, and it's pretty great. This I used Voxel PLA. And I mean, not only are these two oranges almost the same, this one's a little lighter, but they feel very similar in quality and everything. So their filament seems pretty good too. I will play with it more. And when I revisit in that TPU video, we'll talk about you know how my experience went with the rest of these two rolls. And I have two other rolls, one that's similar to this and then another solid color, I think purple or something. But when I have the time, we will play with that. I need to find a place to set this. I'll have a link to this in the 
description and sticky comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know if you got one of these.